Kathleen and I am here with Laura and we work with Big Green so we're gonna help you with your learning garden and I'll probably be the person who you see the most out here with you once the garden has been built and Colleen is gonna help us this morning to think through where should this garden go and how should it be designed and we're going to be coming to you virtually into your classroom our colleague Odie we're gonna work with you to think about how to lay out the various elements of the garden that come with your learning garden and where it should go in the space and how you're going to use it. So Colleen's going to help us think through more specifics about that. Yes. So um, as a designer, there's a lot of things you want to consider. The first thing being, what does your space look like already? So here we are outside. You can see there's already a lot going on. We've got a really nice outdoor seating area with those beautiful benches. We've got these trees that are gonna leaf out and give some nice shade in the summer. We've got the school building back over here. We've got some evergreen trees on this side. So we're gonna walk around this space and kind of look at all the different elements and think about what does our garden need to grow? What are the most important things for the garden to have? So we already have a place for it. That's super important. Now what's next? We got the place. So think about what do plants need to grow? How am I gonna make sure they have what they need? And we'll look for things that can help us fill those needs. All right, so if we look over here, you can see the building casts a shadow. Now we're here in the morning so yeah, Laura's gonna walk over there and you can see how different she looks when she's in the sunlight. See, she's nice and bright and then she's gonna step back into that shadow and it's darker. Now think about how that's gonna affect your garden, right? So this shadow is gonna move. In the morning, the shadow's over here. It's gonna change throughout the day and throughout the seasons. So think about those things. Think about how these trees are gonna change and leaf out and provide shade. So we want our garden to get a lot of sun. So let's check out this super sunny spot over here. And Laura's gonna look around for something else that the garden needs. It needs water. So you're gonna get some water from the clouds and the rain, but sometimes you're gonna have to water the garden. And that's gonna come from right over there. We've got one place where a hose can hook up and you can put that hose next to your garden. Now, if you look very closely on this space, it's a big building. That's a big sunny area. And oh, there's another spigot. So think about, is that a good option for us? It's a little bit farther away from that sunny spot. Now over here, you've got your labyrinth. And this, was a, this is a very nice uh, feature of your school. So we're going to let that stand as it is and make sure the garden complements the labyrinth and, and isn't crowding it out. Okay, so as we're looking, you can kind of see it's mostly flat, but Laura's going to walk around over here and the slope of the ground does change. So as she, as she walks over that way, it goes down. She's going downhill a little bit. And then if she turns back towards the building, it's gonna go back uphill. So that's gonna affect how the water flows in your garden and around your garden. And it's gonna affect how your beds are placed on the ground. So just something to consider. Think about the shape of the land, the water source, the sunlight, and all the other special features that you have in your garden. All right, well, Colleen gave us a great overview of things to think about as we um, explore the space. And I sort of walked around while she talked to you about different um, elements of the space that we need to consider as we determine where the learning garden should go back here in this area. So she mentioned the building. And again, noting that the building casts shade. What else did you notice, Colleen? 
Well, yeah, thinking about what plants need, they definitely need plenty of light and they also need water. So we walked around and we looked for where we could get water access to the garden. And because this is a big building, Laura found two places that you could hook your hose up. But we want to first make sure that they both work and then think about how much hose you need to get to your garden, how long that's going to be, because that's a, another important tool that you're going to have to, that Big Green will provide, but we want to make sure that it all fits together. So we looked at the hoses and um, Laura, what was the next thing you looked at? Yeah. Uh, we also considered these beautiful trees that we're sitting under and the fact that right now it's winter, so there's no leaves on the trees, but they're not going to stay without their leaves all year round. At least we hope not. If they are, they're not very healthy trees. So when they have all of their leaves out, how will that change the shade that the trees cast? And in this particular garden, you're going to have um, an additional element called a shade structure. So your garden will have beds. It will have a few extra benches to complement the great seating you already have out here. And it will have this shade structure. So you'll be able to think about where should these different elements go? You'll be students out here in this space. So what would make sense to you for having class or for doing experiments and learning out in the garden? And what we'll do is we're going to um, join your class virtually and take you through a process. So you'll have some Google Slides that show you those different elements that I was just talking about. And you actually get to move them around and you'll have a base that shows this area that we've been walking around. It shows you where the trees are and where the building is. And you'll get to experiment with where you're going to place those. Colleen, what else might they want to think about um, as they're deciding where things go? Yeah, I think the last thing we want you to notice as you check out your garden space is the slope or the hill of the, the land around here. So it looks pretty flat and it is pretty flat. And as you walk around, you just want to take note of where the, the land slopes downhill because that's where the water is going to flow. And the, the con contractors, the construction crew that builds the garden is going to have to think about that stuff as they move the land around a little bit and place the garden in the ground. So as designers, it's definitely an important thing to take note of. And I think those were the four main things we really wanted you to consider. Light, water, sh uh, slope, and... The elements. The elements, all the different design features that you're working with. So um, using all of that, we want you to be creative and have fun and we'll see you soon. Yeah, and one more thing that we didn't mention is that when this garden um, is, is built here at the school, there's going to be some sort of, probably a, a cement surface that goes in that the beds are gonna sit on. So they're not gonna sit on the grass. So even thinking about how that's gonna change the feel of the space and how much of that area here, what sort of footprint do you wanna see that cement have um, and you can be creative in thinking about how, how that would move and flow in the space as well. All right, well, we look forward to seeing you again soon for our design activity. And if you get a chance to come out and walk around in the space for yourself, it'll help give you even a, a deeper sense of, you know, what the space is that we're talking about when we're doing the activity with you. Um, and if you don't get a chance out, we hope this video helps you bring yourself mentally and sort of in an embodied sense out into the space. Thanks. Bye.